Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the film attorney, and this episode comes at the request of the Almighty Faust. Bitch. Vampires are cinema's oldest and most celebrated monster. They're also the lamest and least scary. There have been good vampire movies over the years, but as time goes on, vampires have evolved from pale-faced ghouls that feed on blood, to unruly teenagers who feed on blood, to gay guys who feed on blood, to whatever vampire the masquerade was, and to superheroes who fight werewolves. The concept has been beat to death, and I for one jumped off the vampire boat after Queen of the Damned. So needless to say, I never got into this whole Buffy the Vampire Slayer deal. But I have seen episodes of it over the years, and it looked absolutely awful. Cheesy TV acting, the cheesy TV effects, the lame and unnatural and unrealistic dialogue. Me? I'm lost? Look at you, you idiot. All that plus vampires. Not to mention, the show was a complete bastardization of something I actually grew up loving. Christy Swanson. I am so sure. Donald Sutherland. Ah, ah. Paul Rubens. Ah. With Rutger Hauer and Luke Perry. Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. Well, as it turns out, the movie that I loved was the bastardization, and this was Joss Whedon's original vision. Joss. What was that? His name is Joss Whedon, like J-O-S-S. Who names their kid Joss? That ain't even a word. That ain't even, that, that ain't a name. He's Josh Whedon. Let's do this boy a favor and put an H in his name. He's Josh Whedon, god dang it. What do you at me, man? That's his fucking name. Well, as it turns out, Buffy fans feel the same way about this movie that I do about this TV show. So let's break it down and see which one of us is right. So what exactly makes this a bad movie? Is it the one-dimensional characters? This is a common criticism you hear about films made back in the era when people had personalities instead of mental disorders. You used to see all kinds of little cultures in films, like you had your metalheads, your hip-hoppers, punk rockers, jazzercisers, skateboarders, roller rinkers, gangbangers, your freaks, your geeks, your preps, your troubled youths, club kids, jocks, your cowboys. There was a ton of these little culture cliques back in the day, and Buffy was part of the Southern Cali Valley Girl clique. Needless to say, all these girls speak the same language, like all the same things. What are the most immediate threats to the world environment right now? Um, litter? Litter, yeah. Forest fires? Bugs? Bugs, totally. It's like if you look at modern day nerd culture, ain't no different, y'all like the same crap. Batman, Ninja Turtles, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, and you all hate the same crap. Michael Bay, Jar Jar Banks, Megan Fox, standing next to one another, y'all become pretty one dimensional. The blatantly obvious product placement? All right, and here's a good chance to cover another very common movie criticism, the product placement. Now, occasionally, on very rare occasions, product placement in a movie will be so obnoxiously ham-fisted that it takes you out of the thing and ruins the movie completely. This is amazing! It's on the right in an amusement park! You mean like at Universal Studios? <laughs> Cha <-ching. laughs> Now, why it's so bad to have a Pepsi sitting idly on a table, I have no idea. Coke, McDonald's, Burger King, IHOP, and every other restaurant Superman destroyed in that one movie. Those places and things actually exist. Having somebody stand in front of a Sears or, or eating a bag of Doritos, that, that's not unnatural or unrealistic. In, in fact, anybody who's ever filmed anything outside of their bedrooms knows that product placement is dang near unavoidable. And it's also kind of silly considering that these complaints are always levied by a person sitting in front of an entire wall of nothing but product placement. Like her TV counterpart, Buffy has the typical Slayer powers, including enhanced speed, strength, and agility. She also has a distinct birthmark, which is the way the Slayer is identified in this universe. She also has the ability to sense vampires with her vagina. I'm not kidding, she actually can detect vampires with her menstrual cramp. Yeah, I'm gonna have to guess that this might be an element added by the film's director, Fran Kazooie, in order to tie Buffy's destiny as a vampire slayer directly to her femininity. See, that's something Josh Whedon wouldn't think of, because Josh Whedon's a man. Josh Whedon is a man trying to write, by the way, with the agenda of writing a, a, a film about an empowered woman. 
which means all classic things that make her, you know, a girl, feminine in any way, that all has to get deleted and thrown right out the window. And especially anything, anything at all that involves her lady parts. Because, see, when a man writes it, it comes off as sort of a juvenile self-indulgence, like you're writing your own pornography. Also, when you're trying to empower women, she can't be seen near a kitchen, a microwave, a stove, a refrigerator, a waffle maker, a blender. She can't even make her own drinks. And if you really wanted to make that statement, you'd cast an ugly girl. You wouldn't cast Sarah Michelle Gellar. You'd cast Wiener Dog from Welcome to the Dollhouse. Not that I'd kick her out of bed either, but uh, you know what? Some, uh, I don't know, balding, buck-tooth, redhead with a hair lip, noticeably uneven hooters. That would be making a female empowerment statement. Instead, they just stick a supermodel in a turtleneck and lie to themselves about the fact that they're using hot women to sell this cheeseball vampire show. Watson is very capable as Buffy. She's tough, resourceful, and witty. However, we never really connect with her character. Swanson doesn't convey the angst of Buffy's dual life, and she lacks the depth Geller brought to the role. She comes off as more of a caricature than a real person. You know, that might be true, but there is one thing you gotta account for with that. See, Sarah Michelle Geller had seven seasons worth of TV show time to be Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Christy Swanson had 82 minutes. Only 82 minutes to be Buffy the Vapid Popular Girl. Learn her destiny as a vampire slayer, accept her destiny as a vampire slayer, train to be a vampire slayer, slay a couple of vampires, develop a student-teacher relationship with Merrick, develop a romantic relationship with Pike, lose her mentor, walk away from her responsibilities, re-accept her responsibilities, kill the bad guy, and she has to do all of this nonsense in 82 minutes. Well, really, 65 if you, you know, factor out the scenes Buffy's not actually in. So while the character does experience more in the show, that doesn't mean the performance has depth. It, okay, let's compare the scene where Buffy first meets Merrick to, uh, I don't know, some randomly selected dramatic scene from the show. Notice how many things Christy Swanson is saying with her actions and her face in this conversation. You see, when Merrick steps closer to her, notice her body language and facial expression. Alright, that's really short. We'll slow it down. But it, it's very subtle, but it's all there. Okay, notice that slight little step backwards. See, it communicates her fight-or-flight response beginning to kick in. If a human is confronted with the situation... We know what it is. Okay, now see, as Merritt gets closer, she walks away. While her dialogue is saying typically bubble-headed stuff and getting a little more information out of this guy, because let's be honest, what he's saying is a little interesting, even if it's nuts. But every action is telling its own story, and it has its own agenda. See, as she walks away from him, she's not only getting a jacket, which also facilitates her f making a faster exit away from Merrick, even so much as walking behind this bleacher or balance bar, whatever the heck it is, putting an obstacle between her and this very strange fellow talking about her birthright and vampires. Which she is not only dismissing verbally, but also with a series of facial movements, eye-rolling. Putting on her jacket, once again, moving Buffy's character one step closer to her goal of getting away from this nutcase. Notice how here, Sarah Michelle Gellar cannot figure out what to do with her hands. Okay, Adam was at that cave, so maybe he was there for a reason. I, I, could, I could go back, scope it out, track him if... It's one of those otter acting challenges you don't realize actually exist until you're acting, but these freaking things here will throw you off. If you can't figure out what to do with these, your scene comes off awkward and uncomfortable. Being self-conscious about what these things are doing is the... it's harder than remembering your lines, it's harder than remembering your blocking, and in this scene, to be fair, I can't figure out what she's supposed to do with her hands. I have no suggestions. Superior. You guys stop this. What happened to you today? And also notice how everyone just stands around waiting to say their lines. It, it look at the characters who aren't talking and how uninvested they are in what the other person is actually saying. Here's what they're really thinking. Just not my alone. turn. Giles not my turn. Around. You're not my alone. turn. And that's not really just judging it by that one clip. I've seen the show over the years. I had to look up clips to research this episode. And I, the, the acting in this show is just so stale and lifeless. It's that bad, over-melodramatic TV acting that you see in shows like Baywatch. Swanson's Buffy has likes, dislikes, personality quirks. Uh, she speaks a language that teenage girls spoke at that time. And while Sarah Michelle Gellar is just Sarah Michelle Gellar. 
Like the show, the vampires in the film have the standard weaknesses, light, fire, holy water, and crosses. However, these vampires are a bit different. They don't transform when they feed, they have pointy ears, and they don't turn to dust when staked. This last element gives a really uncomfortable edge to the aftermath of the fight sequences. Well, they explode into dust because this show's on the WB. And this preceded the era of uh, gritty TV shows like American Horror Story where they get away with everything but the F word and a nipple. And there's a million cheap little reasons to do it too, like so Buffy doesn't have to answer questions. You see, movie Buffy is going to be answering some post credit sequence questions. I don't know if it makes you feel any better. These vampires were teenagers. They had parents. And in this situation, a parent, as odd as it may sound, would rather get back a dead body with a tent peg through it than a missing kid in some insane story about how he blew up into bad TV effects because he turned into a vampire. No one in the movie shows any degree of terror when confronted by dire supernatural events. Actually, I think this gal is turned on. Hear me out. See, Lothos ain't a ghoul like Lefty here. He's a dashing, suave, powerful gentleman. So powerful, in fact, he flies. And she's still scared and knows she's in mortal danger, but... There's also a chance this dark prince is looking for a princess. This also goes to serve as a good example of why vampires aren't scary. The consequences of getting bit by one of these things is immortality and superpowers. Oh boy, watch out for that. Even becoming one of these disgusting things from, from dusk till dawn, it, it's still a better deal than you get from the monsters in Hellraiser. At least they know how to throw a good party at the titty twister. The film's stagnant plot is most apparent with the film's big bad, Lothos. Lothos is an ancient vampire and the leader of the local coven. After hibernating for several centuries, he dramatically rises from the grave to... do something? Yeah, Lothos is a pretty mediocre bad guy, but then again, he's a vampire. What do you, what do you expect? Uh, really, the thing here is not Rudger Hauer's Lothos, because well, we've seen Rudger Hauer play a million bad guys in a million other movies. The real thing here, and I don't think people really appreciate this this much in this day and age, but back in 1992, we'd never seen Pee Wee Herman play a character like this. That was the interesting thing. That was the bad guy you liked watching, because you couldn't believe it was Pee Wee. And I hated Pee Wee. Kill him a lot. This is one of those films, whether it was done as a serious horror suspense film or the lighthearted comedy in which it became, Buffy was always meant to be the most interesting character in the film. Her enemies are stock monsters that have been everything from uh, vicious blood suckers to, to serial mascots. Count Chocula has chocolate sweeties. That Buffy the airheaded cheerleader slash vampire slayer, that was the only original part of Josh Whedon's original vision for this. Unlike Josh's feminist inspired vision for Buffy, the director interpreted the material as a parody of vampires. In Josh's own words, I had written this scary film about an empowered woman and they turned it into a broad comedy. It was crushing. Yeah, cause Josh Whedon's vampire story, that's what women's suffrage has been waiting on all these years. I just love the image of Josh Whedon leaving a movie set going, I was trying to write a women's empowerment movie and this bitch over here is fucking it up! Right? I mean, exactly how did this fail on a female empowerment front? It, it's still a strong independent woman staking vampires. Is it not? What's the difference between Sarah Michelle Gellar and Christy Swanson in that area. My keen fashion sense. Yeah, other than that, other than the fact that Christy Swanson doesn't dress like Hillary Clinton. I don't feel no ways tired. Fran Kazooie has the good sense as a woman to know that you can empower a female and still have her kill vampires while dressed like the Bride of Chucky. Does the word duh mean anything to you? All right, now here's the problem with Joss Whedon's original vision for this film, based on this quote. It's nauseating and redundant tripe even in 1992. Now here's the redundant part. The horror genre is the headliner for empowered female characters. Nancy Thompson, Ripley, Sidney Prescott, Kirsty Cotton, Sarah Connor, Jennifer Hill, the Firestarter. And that's not counting the thousands of nameless, faceless women who have killed Freddy and Jason knockoffs over the years. And now for the tribe. Vampires! Even in 1992, Vampire Scare Factor was wearing really thin. I mean, good lord, Count Dracula is a character on Sesame Street. The Lost Boys, Near Dark, Interview with a Vampire, uh, all of these are great classic vampire films. 
but none of them are scary. The harder they tried to be scary, the worse they were. Even Bram Stoker's Dracula, as well done as it was, as perfectly true to the original source material as it stayed. It's still not fun to watch. It's a goddamn chore to sit through that thing. And yeah, being a writer and having your work completely misinterpreted, that kind of sucks, but uh, the changes, like the one that occurred here, they're not always bad. Case in point, The Shining. Revered horror classic now, one of the best horror films ever made. You know who doesn't like it? It's original writer Stephen King. So the images are striking, but to me that's surface, it's not substance. So I used to describe The Shining, the film, as something like a beautiful car that had no engine in it. And the rest of us have been telling him he's insane since 1980. Now Buffy the Vampire Slayer is not a masterpiece like The Shining or anything, but Joss Whedon ought to have the self-awareness to know that he's writing unoriginal, recycled junk. Uh, high schoolers fighting vampires. I mean, come on. It, Fright Night. Lost Boys. To Die For. Vamp. My Best Friend's a Vampire. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And you know, the truth is, uh, changing the gender is not that hard. It, it, Joss Whedon was the first one to do it, to his credit, but... It's really all about which one you saw first. To me, Christy Swanson will always be the real Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She was the original, and she had the quirky personality that made this movie so fun to watch in the first place. I'm the film attorney, and for now, the defense rests. Friend Melissa, her head looked like a big party balloon, and that, that boy, oh, that scared me. And... Awesome!